what's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a little grit and warmth to your drums using just two plugins from the Mini American Signature Series. We're gonna focus on the Mini Distortion and the Mini Tone Shaper. Now, these plugins have simple interfaces with few controls, but you're gonna get big results. So let's dig right in. Now the Mini Distortion is simple, but a super effective way for adding a touch of grit to any sound. We can use it to add bite and some definition to drums in no time. I have this kit going here. Let's start on the distortion level. This determines the level of distortion coming out of the plugin. I'm gonna take this halfway up to about 50. All right, we don't hear any changes yet, but that's where the drive comes in. The drive sets how much of the signal you send to the distortion. Now you can go full grimy with it, or you can give it a subtle crunch. We just wanna heat it up a little bit, so I'm gonna set it to about 20. Now the behavior of the distortion has a lot to do with the attack and the release settings. So I'm gonna bring up the drive real quick, just so you can hear exactly what the attack and release are doing. Now you have the attack here. This sets how fast the distortion attacks the signal. Now you can hear how that moves across the kicks transients. I want to catch that first spike, make it punchier. So I'm going to keep the attack at about 0.2 milliseconds. All right. Now the release determines how fast the distortion cleans up. Check it out. See, if I take the release all the way up, it very slightly warms up the end tail of the kick. But if I bring it all the way down, the distortion will close up faster and it adds a nice tonal sort of warmth to it. Feels good right there. I'm at about 27. All right, I'm just going to bring the drive back down to where I had it. But you know, every kick is different, so feel free to adjust these to shape just the right amount of distortion on your kick. Now we have the bass control here, which gives you a wide shelf around 100 hertz, and it sets how much of those lows you send to the distortion. I like it right there at about minus 21, right where it started to give just a little crunch. All right, now on the mid, we have a frequency control with a bell-shaped filter that ranges from 150 hertz to five kilohertz. Let's bring up the mid and sweep with the frequency control to see if we can bring out some of that click. All right, I like the click I'm getting right here at about three kilohertz on the frequency. And then I'm just gonna play it back real quick with the music to see where we're at. All right, so I ended up at about 24 in the mid and that brought out some of that click, but without getting too harsh. All right, onto the treble. It sets how much high end is hitting the distortion. It's basically a bell-shaped curve at about 9 kilohertz. For this kick, we're going to leave it alone for now. Now, the last thing is a low-pass filter, and I'm just going to take this to about 10K. Not too much going on above that on the kick, all right? Let me A-B this for you real quick so you can hear the difference. Here's the before. And after. All right, let me show you the same process on the snare this time. Let's give it some more energy and warmth and fatness. So I'm gonna set the distortion level halfway at 50. Now let's adjust the drive. All right, I like that bite I'm getting at about 28. Now on the snare, instead of accentuating that first strike with distortion, like we did on the kick, I'm gonna bring out some of that body. Check it out. So I ended up setting the attack at about 50, and that gave it a nice gritty sort of lift. All right, now on the release, I'm gonna leave it open all the way up, just so the decay of the distortion lasts for the entire snare hit. All right, now we can warm up the body just a little bit with the bass. I like it right there at about three, but just a little with this is gonna go a long way. 
Let's use the mid now to see if we can bring out some of that slap. Check it out. All right, so I ended up at about 2400 hertz on the frequency and right at about two on the mid. And that gave the snare just a little more smack. Now let's use the treble just to sizzle up the highs a little bit. All right, so I added just a touch at about two and a half, and then we can filter out any top end harshness with the low pass filter. All right, so I ended up with my low pass filter at about 12K. Let's AB the snare to check out what we did. Here's the before. And after. All right, so now that we added a nice grit and subtle fatness to the drums, let's open up the mini Tone Shaper. It's a four band parallel compressor with EQ and secret sauce, perfect for drum groups or any mix bus. We're gonna use it to get a punchy New York style compression and warmth on these drums. All right, the direct we can leave alone for now. Let's start by turning on the lows. But before we start boosting, take a look real quick at these frequency ranges on each band. Now you have one, two, and three. One being the lowest, and three being the highest in that band. So now I'm gonna boost this up just a little hot, just so you can hear the difference between the three. Check it out. So you hear how wide things got at three? I'm gonna keep it on one, so we're focusing mostly on the kick on this band. Now let me play it back with some music and we can set the level for the lows. Right there at about 50 feels good. Feel free to take this to where it feels good for you. All right, the low mid band is that range between 250 and 500 hertz. Now what tends to sound a little boxy on drums, So we're gonna leave the low mid off for now. Let's move on to the high mid. I like the way it sort of opened up here at about 30 and I got the range on two and that gave it a little more snap. Now onto the high band. All right, so I took the highs up to about 60, and I had the frequency set on three, and that made the drums sound a bit clearer and a little bit more crispy. All right, the last control we have is the width. Now, most of my drum hits for this session are in mono, except for these toms, which are in stereo. Let's spread these out with the width control. I like to feel at about 75. We managed to widen those out a little bit and we made some adjustments to the drums. Let me AB both the mini distortion and the tone shaper so you can hear the difference. Here's the before. And after. And there you go, a really quick way to bring out a little dirt and a punch of your fullness to drums using just two plugins. Make sure you check out waves.com slash Manny to learn even more about the Manny Marroquin Signature Series. This is a set of six plugins created in collaboration with eight-time Grammy-winning mixer Manny Marroquin. He's one of the top mix engineers in the game. You hear his amazing work across all genres. This series of plugins are going to do their thing no matter what type of music you're working on. So to learn more, definitely head over to waves.com slash Manny. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest tips, tricks, and more from Waves Audio. And until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you.